After quite a wait, we finally have a fifth generation Jeep Grand Cherokee. How about we get to know it? This particular model is the Grand Cherokee L. That L means it's longer than the standard Grand Cherokee. With its extra length, the L offers something new for the Grand Cherokee lineup. A third row, with the front and second row seats set for my ideal position. Knee room is a little bit tight, but headroom, I've got great clearance. And this is genuinely soft. My elbow is very happy. And you've got USB-C and A ports right here, plus a cup holder. Although I haven't figured out a way to angle these seat backs. I don't know if I can uh, get a little bit more reclined. That would make this even nicer. After further investigation, no, the third row seats don't recline. Bummer. Move up one row though, and you can slide and recline all you want. No surprise, but in the second row, my five foot 10 inch body fits with space to spare. Second row captain's chairs come standard, but if you'd like seating for seven, you can also opt for a second row bench. For access to the third row, the second row flips smartly forward, enabling easy entry even with a car seat installed. Plus, there's an integrated grab handle to make ingress even easier. For cargo hauling, there's a decent 17.2 cubic feet behind the third row. Drop them for 46.9 cubic feet behind the second row. Neither of those figures is best in class, but they are very competitive. Elsewhere, the cabin offers generous door storage, plenty of cup holders, tons of USB-A and USB-C ports, and for models with the second row captain's chairs, a center console that flips forward for flat cargo loading. From a quality perspective, I will say the interior feels exceptionally premium. Of course, we're driving the most elite Summit trim, hashtag Blue Book Life. But richness permeates most of the Grand Cherokee L range. In fact, aside from the base Laredo trim, all trims get leather-appointed interiors. On infotainment duty, there's a standard 8.4-inch screen, or as on the higher trims, and in this one we're driving right now, this 10.1-inch screen. The interface works great, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both wireless, come standard. And I really like that when I connected my phone via USB, Apple CarPlay just popped right up. Very convenient. I do have a complaint, though, because I always have a complaint. Black plastic, it's so shiny, and they use it here on the buttons as well as the surround. When you're driving in, in bright sunlight, the shifter reflects on these uh, buttons and you can't tell which button it is. The scourge of black plastic continues. <laughs> I'm pushing needlessly aggressive, aggressively because I'm so angry about this black plastic. Poke, poke. Okay, let's discuss the driving experience. For propulsion, a 3.6 liter V6 paired with an eight speed automatic transmission comes standard on all trims. The V6 is a carryover from the previous generation Grand Cherokee, and interestingly, its power figures have actually dropped slightly, though fuel economy remains the same as generation number four. If you plan to tow, the V6 can handle up to 6,200 pounds. Move up to the optional 5.7 liter V8, and max tow capacity rises to 7,200 pounds. Note, the V8 is only offered on the two highest Grand Cherokee L trims. Here are the power stats, and here are the fuel economy numbers. Yes, the V8 is only offered with four-wheel drive. Unsurprisingly, we're driving the V8. Let's see how she pulls. Oh, she pulls, yeah. I know it's a carryover engine, but it still feels strong. I should also mention the Grand Cherokee 4xe plug-in hybrid. Yes, that's the proper pronunciation of the 4xe spelling. Annoyingly, Jeep hasn't revealed any stats about the Grand Cherokee 4xe prior to making this video, but for perspective, the Wrangler 4xe can cover up to 25 miles using electricity alone. As for four-wheel drive systems, the Grand Cherokee offers three. The Laredo and Limited trims feature the full-time single-speed Quadratrack 1 four-wheel drive system. Quadra Track 2 comes standard on the Overland trim and adds a two-speed transfer case. Optional on the Overland and standard on the Summit trim is Quadra Drive 2, which incorporates an electronic limited slip rear differential. With all that technical information swimming in your brain, let's talk about ride quality. For suburban driving, the Grand Cherokee's suspension tuning and noise management reflect a premium sensibility. The steering wheel offers very little information about what the front tires are up to, but if you're motivated, you can hustle through corners. Oh, wow, I really got shut down by the uh, stability control. Jeep, you're smarter than I am. 
Stick with the cheapest Grand Cherokee El Laredo trim, and the MSRP sits around $37,000, not including a hefty $1,695 destination charge. At that price, your Grand Cherokee L will come with LED headlights, a power driver's seat, a 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster, smart key access, and a full suite of active driver assist tech. That suite includes features like automatic emergency braking, full speed adaptive cruise control, and lane keeping assist. Explore higher trims and you can add indulgences like the select terrain drive mode system, an air suspension with active dampers, remote releases for the second row seats, power folding third row seats, a very nice 360 degree camera system, a rear camera to observe second and third row passengers, a hands-free power lift gate, and a swank Napa leather interior as seen on this Summit trim. And I'm not sure when you're viewing this video, but Jeep should have a hands-free level two driver assist feature dubbed Active Driving Assist for the Grand Cherokee L by late 2021. Among the many Grand Cherokee variants, one is missing though, the super off-road capable Trailhawk, at least as of when I voiced this voiceover. No worries, I'm sure Jeep is wise enough to have a Trailhawk in the works. I hope. Also in the works, KBB taking the Generation 5 Grand Cherokee off-road. Sadly, we didn't have quite enough time this round to explore the wilderness. As consolation, here's some Jeep-provided B-roll. Ooh, ah, look at that competently shot adventure footage. Among the Grand Cherokee L's competition, we have the Kia Telluride, Honda Pilot, Volkswagen Atlas, Toyota Highlander, and many others, most of which offer a lower base price. Then again, fancy Jeep! For the smaller non-L Grand Cherokee, five passenger alternatives worth considering include the Honda Passport, Hyundai Santa Fe, and Subaru Outback. Of course, none of those competitors have the implied ruggedness of the Jeep brand or the emotional pull of its Jeepy styling. Merge that emotional styling with the cabin's heightened sophistication and Grand Cherokee Generation Number 5 looks awfully compelling. But Jeep, I'm looking forward to that Trailhawk.